This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. I just got an emergency service call. Dropped what I was doing to rush over here. Uh, this exhaust fan. Customer said the exhaust fan went down again. This is the one that we just put a motor in. I just, like a couple, maybe a month ago, three weeks ago, just put a motor in this thing and they're saying that it went down. So, um, I'm up here. That's weird. It's, it's running. It's moving. Maybe they meant the other exhaust fan. They said there was smoke rolling out. This one's kicking butt too. I don't understand. They said they heard a loud noise and then it just stopped. It's, let me get this cover off. This thing's running. I don't understand. I don't get it. It's weird because yesterday, I mean, this thing's kicking butt. Belt looks good. Let's turn it off real quick. Let's hinge it. So they put in a work order yesterday saying an AC unit was making a loud noise. So we didn't come out. Yesterday was Super Bowl Sunday. We didn't think anything of it. But then this morning they're like, where are you at? This is an emergency. And we're like, well, next time put some details in the work order. But um, yeah, they said this morning it stopped working. I see that they didn't clean it. I told them to clean it, but there's no damage. I mean, I don't know what the noise, I mean, usually if there was damage like it was hitting, you would see it. This thing is certainly really dirty inside, but I don't know what there, there's, there's no play. I mean, I'm moving it back and forth. There's no play in the bearings. There's no damage. Huh, all right, I'm gonna put this back down and look at their other fan. I'm really confused because this thing's kicking butt too. I mean, really good. Let's turn it off. I don't hear any noises, no bearing damage. I mean, they said that this was like 911. It was making a loud noise. Like what the heck? So that fan's fine, other than being dirty. This one, belt's tight. Belt's tight, no bearing damage. Uh, I think maybe we need a new pulley because that belt is tight. But regardless, that's not the issue. I mean, they're saying this is a 911. I wonder if it's a make bear unit or the AC. Because yesterday they put in a work order saying the AC unit was making a noise. And then this morning they said, no, it's an exhaust fan. Get here 911. But then they said that there was smoke like rolling out of the hood. We better look at the make bear unit. Okay, the make bear unit's right here. Ah. That's what they heard. Look at that. So, oh yeah, don't you know? Would you just look at that? That's nice. So, turn that guy off. Oh boy. Well, I'm gonna get a new blower assembly on this guy. Wow. That guy's uh, toasted. You know, and the bearings are going bad in that motor too. I don't know if you guys can hear it. But we'll come over here. Looks like they've just lost a bearing or something, but it totally destroyed the wheel blower housing. So we should be able to pull this thing out. It shouldn't be too hard. We'll probably end up putting, we're gonna do a rebuild. So we'll get this thing undone. I have my, uh, I have someone else here with me. So we'll get this thing pulled out and roped down to the ground and we'll take it to the motor shop. I have a motor shop that'll rebuild these for us. Um, we can certainly do it, but having the motor shop do it makes it a lot easier. So, uh, we'll get it pulled out. My other guy hasn't gotten here yet. He should be here any minute, but I got it all unbolted. Um, wanting to take some pictures. Remember where brackets go. Cause it has these funky brackets right here. So we've got that, um, motors out. Now we're going to end up pulling the motor and disconnect the electrical too. And we'll probably, cause we're going to replace the motor. Cause it sounded like the bearings were going bad in it. But um, we'll redo the conduit too, because I guarantee the wires are jacked up in that MX conduit. So um, yeah, just a little bit at a time. I've gotten to the point where I need help now. I don't want to hurt myself, so. All right, in hindsight, I probably should have just rebuilt this myself. Uh, normally we would just use the motor shop. They'd rebuild it, it'd be done. It's been like two or three weeks. It took them forever to rebuild this thing, but we got busy and it just, it wasn't a priority for me anyways. It wasn't a big deal, so, but we're back. We're done. And I'm surprised too, again, I know the motor shop's super busy, but usually they paint the blower housings too, but it is what it is. It'll be fine. This isn't a wet environment or anything. So um, we're gonna get this guy assembled, put back in. Uh, we did get a new motor too. 
So we've got to figure all that stuff out. We got to clean up the inside of the unit. So we got our work cut out for us for sure. Given any opportunity, I get rid of old MX conduit because it damages the wire. Now this is only a ground wire, but all the wires are the same. That's messing with the jacket of the wire and that's the ridges from the MX conduit. It's actually penetrating the jacket. Now there's no direct short yet, but that same thing, if you run your fingers down the wire, you can feel all the little ridges and it's all the points at which that MX conduit meets. I'm not a fan of MX at all. I tend to have better luck with uh, seal tight. Now I realize uh, metallic seal tight has a metal jacket inside too, but there's something about the way that the metal jacket on uh, seal tight is different and it doesn't tend to rub. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace this wire and we'll put some seal tight conduit there and some new fittings going to the motor. Um, yeah, and then go from there, so. All right, we didn't go crazy, but we did our best to vacuum out the inside, wipe it down real quick. We tried to cover up because the building is uh, under a negative air pressure right now because this is their supply fan. Um, but we cleaned it up kind of, like not crazy, right? This stuff is coming apart too, so the more you scrub, the more it like the top layer foil comes off. Um, we went ahead and put new conduit. We've got a new motor. Uh, we wired it up to the motor. Everything's secured inside. We're double checked. Everything's cool. We're grounded. We've got excess wires coming here. We'll deal with that in a little while. I pulled it all the way back to the motor starter. I'm also gonna investigate that motor starter, make sure there's no issues with that. Um, we're gonna put this guy back on. It's a little tricky, but we're slowly putting it back together. Again, it just gotta pay attention to how you took it apart. That's the biggest thing. I have pictures too of when I took it apart, but I'm just, I mean, it's pretty common sense. This thing kind of just fits back together, you know, and you shouldn't have anything left over after. Uh, funny story, I used to work at a body shop and um, I worked there for two years and I had two giant buckets full of extra bolts and nuts and stuff uh, when I left because we always saved our extra parts. Now, most of that stuff wasn't uh, leftover parts. It was like, you know, if we replaced something, we got new stuff, but it still makes me laugh because I, how many cars are potentially driving without like one bolt somewhere. We always had rules depending on the sizes and stuff, but anyways. Um, all right, so we're gonna finish this up. All right, we've got a taper lock on the driven pulley. And then we have a uh, double groove pulley, just like that, obviously double groove there. But we had to take this one off to tighten the set screw. So before you tighten the set screw though, you wanna make sure that the key is pushed all the way in and I'll pull the set screw out and then I'll look in there typically to verify that we can actually see, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Yeah, that's the key right there. So we're good to put the set screw in there and we kind of have it set where we think it needs to be. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and set this guy, tighten it back up, and then we can move that one in and out a little bit as need be because that one will be the variable. This one's kind of hard to move. So once we kind of get it in the general area, we're gonna put the double-sided pulley back on. Um, and when we tighten these things, I go tight, loose, and you run it. So what you're doing is you're scarring this, the, the, the keyway. So every time, you tighten and then loosen, you'll notice that you can go a little bit tighter. So I, run, I call that running the screw in. I'm sure there's a better name for it, but. All right, we're all assembled. We're tensioned up. Everything's equal. We've got proper tension on the belt. Everything's double tightened. Um, we're looking good so far. Alignment's good. So now we've got to uh, figure out the electrical and wire and uh, motor starter. All right, now I have a technician downstairs and we're watching this thing because they are in operation right now and it's been down for about two weeks so the ducts are full of dust. Uh, plus we cleaned it so now there's stuff disturbed. So what I did was I took a water hose and I just lightly misted all this area just to try to kind of slow down the amount of dust that's gonna go down. Um, we're going to fire this guy up. We already tested the rotation, it's going in the right direction but we're just slowly bumping it and that way we're not blowing dust all over the kitchen. We're just doing it a little bit at a time. All right, we are back together. Uh, important thing to understand is in order to test blower current, you need to have the panel on, okay? Because that puts it under the, the building pressure. You take the panel off, you're gonna supply more airflow and potentially cause the amps to go up. Now this one's allowed to run somewhere like 9.2 amps. So we're under current, everything's fine. I decided to go ahead and leave the motor starter. I don't see any big, big issues with it, but I will show you. We're at 5.4 amps. When I pull this panel off, notice that my current went up, okay? So whenever you're testing current on these things, you need to have the panels on, right? Now an exhaust fan, that's different because an exhaust fan is just the motor in the top, but this is the actual air. So now we're moving more air 
through here, right? And we're higher current. So you gotta be careful about that. You don't wanna be doing a PM and trying to test currents with the panel off. So this service call came in the previous night and it didn't come in with any emergency information. And it's kind of weird how this works, but we get service calls, majority of them are through emails now. So you really have to trust what the customer says in the email. And if they don't fill things out right, then you don't really dig in too much further. Um, I don't go chasing every single service call with a phone call unless they call me, right? Because it just, you know, when you get a call at seven o'clock at night and it just says made a loud noise come tomorrow, you know, you, you don't really, you don't chase those ones with phone calls because it's just, you can't stop your life every two seconds, right? It's one thing during the day, during normal business hours, of course, but after hours calls, it's just regular that you get weird service calls and, you know, you just call them in the morning if it doesn't say emergency. So in this situation, they said there was a loud noise, but they didn't put any urgency in it. So we didn't go out there until the next day, you know, we were getting ready to go out there, but then they called us before we got there and said, stop what you're doing, come here now. You know, and it's like, okay, so we turn around and we rush over there and then to be confused to find all the exhaust fans were working. But then inevitably we found the makeup air unit was the problem. Why were they complaining about smoke? I don't think it was smoke. I think when the makeup air stopped, when the, the blower assembly blew apart and the bearing broke and everything, I think that it just sent a bunch of dust downstairs and that came out the makeup air vents and they thought it was smoke. Um, so that's what happened. Uh, you know, it wasn't as bad as they thought it was going to be. And then, you know, I said that I took that blower assembly to a motor rebuild shop. Um, I, that's pretty common because it for the price, it's usually, you know, very cost efficient to go ahead and just drop it off and have someone else do the rebuild on it. But I tell you what, first off, they were super slammed and it took them forever. It was like two or three weeks. I don't remember exactly, but it was forever. Um, and then uh, well, I can look at it right now. Let's see. Um 214 so february 14th i think is when we originally started and then i finished the call on march 4th so whatever that is it was almost two weeks or just over two weeks it took forever so this started before i went to florida for the uh, hvac school symposium uh, this was like a couple days before that and then it just happened yesterday i went and finished it but uh, and yesterday was three four um March 4th, but yeah, it's just crazy. So anyways, in hindsight, I'm probably going to be doing the rebuilds myself again. Uh, for the longest time, I used to rebuild everything, but then it just was very cost efficient and uh, efficient as far as time goes to drop it off at the motor rebuilding shop. Um, in the past, you used to have to trace down blower wheels and shafts and bearings and all that stuff, but now I can just go to the motor rebuilding shop and tell them, hell, I can even just take the blower assembly with me, say, give me all the parts for this. They'll give it to me, and then I just rebuild it and put it back together. Um, perfectly capable of doing that. It's just, it was so convenient, you know? Uh, but yeah, again, with the cost, it was insane how much it cost to have this thing rebuilt as compared to how much it used to be. So regardless, we got the blower assembly put back together when it comes to the MX conduit, you know, that's just, um, things that I have noticed is that when, when there's MX conduit, especially in situations where it can vibrate, um, you know, it tends to rub out after the years, you know, five to 10 years, you're going to need to inspect that wiring, or you're going to be chasing down electrical shorts within the next year or two. So, uh, I try to proactively investigate and look into the wiring and stuff, inspect it. And then in this situation, I went ahead and changed it. I find better luck with uh, metallic seal tight as my conduit. So that's what I went back with. And uh, yeah, everything was good. The unit was operating. The customer was happy. They didn't even notice a difference, really. Not much. I mean, their air balance was a little off, but they weren't complaining the entire time the makeup air unit was down. We got it back up and running and all was well. But I still, you know, try to take care of my customers as best as possible, even when it frustrates me because they're incorrect. They said the exhaust fan was down. I mean, they didn't know any different. You know, the way that I look at it is put things in perspective. Yeah, it's frustrating because they leave doors open or they do whatever and it causes the coils to ice up, but why are they leaving doors open? You know, investigate the cause. Well, the, you know, management is overworked and they don't have time to, you know, follow all their cooks around and make sure they're doing everything right. So, you know, there's always a reason why things happen. And, you know, it can be frustrating because they made me stop my day and run over here because the exhaust fan was down and it wasn't an exhaust fan. So yeah, that, that can be frustrating, but, you know, put yourself in their shoes. You know, they're just trying to run a restaurant and, you know, especially in these corporate ones, they're doing what they're told, you know, they're told to do this, they're told not to do this, you know? So I'm not excusing 
these people for being silly, but I'm just saying that there's always a reason. And so it's easier to, instead of being angry, just try to find out the root cause and see if you can help to solve those issues. Okay. If you guys haven't already, please consider uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel, right? I know some of you get notifications or some of you may not be subscribed. Just do me a favor and subscribe to it if you don't mind. Um, you can follow me on all the different social media platforms at HVACR videos, um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. Um, uh, there's, I think there's another one I'm investigating. I can't remember what the name of it is right now too. But anyways, follow me at HVACR videos on all those different platforms. If you want to check out my website, HVACRvideos.com, it's a cool way to help support the channel. You can get a hat, shirt, beanie, sweater, soon to be stickers. Um, so check that out, HVACRvideos.com. If there's anything that you want me to address, put it down in the comments, or you can shoot me an email at HVACRvideos at gmail.com. Um, I don't know if I totally mistaked right now, but my website is HVACRvideos.com. Did I say gmail.com? I don't know. I'm tripping out right now. But yeah, so my website is HVACRvideos.com, and my email address is HVACRvideos at gmail.com. So anyways, I'm confused. Um, there's other ways to help support the channel, but the easiest way to do it is watch. I mean, uh, yeah, watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. Doesn't cost you a dime. Takes a few minutes of your time. YouTube interjects commercials and stuff. Um, you know, it is what it is. And then YouTube compensates me based off of the amount of time that people watch the commercials. So if you want to help out the channel, you guys have a, a, an easy way to do it. Uh, you can also support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships, um, just there's links in the show notes of this video. Check it out. I really appreciate you. Remember guys, be kind to one another. It's so crazy out there right now. There's so much craziness going on around the world and we could all use a little more kindness. It's something so simple. It really is. It, it, it is so simple just to remember that just because someone's being a jerk, does, we don't have to excuse the fact that they're a jerk, but there might be a reason why we don't understand that reason. Kill them with kindness. You know, just be kind to one another. That's the most important thing, okay? Um, I really appreciate you, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?